गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स so let us start the discussion without wasting any time so last class we have been discussing about halo alkanes and halo arenes in that we have seen the substitution reactions sn1 sn2 reactions and all the other points regarding the rates and all now today's will uh, today's session will be starting with elimination reactions so we have discussed e1 and e2 elimination in the goc as well so elimination is actually classified in two types <clears throat> e1 and e2 elimination unimolecular elimination and bimolecular elimination so by molecular elimination let us start with the first point dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide d means removal hydrohalogenation hydrogen and halogen both are removed we are doing the dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide it is also known as alpha comma beta elimination or 1 comma 2 elimination elimination is actually happening from the two adjacent carbon atoms that is why 1 2 or alpha beta e2 elimination similar to sn2 it is a single step reaction no intermediate is formed but how does the transition state looks like the alkene like transition states yes or no so we have ch3 ch2 ch2x so we have carbon and halogen bond and we said that carbon halogen bond is going to be polar bond so the shared electron density whatever you have that is moving towards halogen developing partial negative on halogen and partial positive on carbon because of the partial positive charge on the carbon atom this ch3 electron density is moving because of this this carbon gets delta plus plus because of this uh, delta plus plus charge this ch electron density moves developing partial positive charge on the hydrogen so base will now try to pick up this proton ch electron density will be donated to form a new pi bond the cx bond that is going to be cleaved so this is how the transition state looks like ch3 ch this carbon is about to break a bond with the hydrogen and form a new bond pi bond with the other carbon atom and the carbon halogen bond is about to be broken base is about to form a new bond with the hydrogen so this is how your transition state looks like and i have already asked the question why can't base pick up the proton from the alpha carbon itself why can't base directly pick up the proton from the alpha carbon itself and halogen can be leaved, leading to the formation of alpha elimination like a, a 1 comma 1 elimination so Due that is not happening because of yeah because of steric hindrance that is not accepted and uh, the base will pick up the proton in such a way such that whatever the alkene is formed no that alkene will have more number of hyperconjugative structures or sets of alkene is going to be formed so this is the transition state the symbol represent transition states and this transition state uh, do not exist for longer time because because of more number of uh, groups present electronic repulsions would be high so immediately this uh, pi bond is going to be formed ch3 ch double bond ch2 plus x minus plus bh this is the major product right so base forming a bond with hydrogen ch electrons are forming pi bond halogen departing with pair of electron these three are happening base is picking up the proton base forming a new bond with hydrogen the ch electron density is forming a pi bond and the halogen is going to be lost taking out the two electrons from the cx bond and rate of the reaction depends upon both alkyl halide as well as the base because it's a single step reaction rate is directly proportional to concentration of alkyl halide and concentration of base so in the rate expression we have concentration of the base so strong base will be having greater rates towards e2 elimination order will be to molecularity will also be true e2 elimination in the e2 elimination 2 stands for bimolecular e stands for elimination okay that is how e2 elimination or bimolecular elimination can be understood rate of e2 elimination is directly proportional to stability of alkene why because transition state looks like alkene looks like alkene all these points i have explained in detail in the goc as well so you, as i have told you at that point also all these reactions are going to be again overlapping in the upcoming sessions so tertiary alkyl halide will form an alkene which will be like this ch3 c ch3 double bond ch2 whereas secondary alkyl halide will form an alkene in this fashion like ch3 ch double bond ch2 primary alkyl halide will form an alkene like ch2 double bond ch2 how many number of hyperconjugative structures here we can have so number of alpha hydrogen six alpha hydrogens 
here we have three alpha hydrogens here we have zero alpha hydrogens and number of hyper conjugative structures is equals to number of hyper conjugative structures is equals to number of alpha hydrogens plus 1 number of alpha hydrogens plus 1 Yes or no? So more number of alpha hydrogens, more number of hyper conjugate structures, more number of hyper conjugate structures, more will be the stability. So I can say tertiary alkyl halide will undergo great E2. The rate of E2 for tertiary alkyl halide will be high, then for secondary and then for primary. In the rate determining step that is RDS, CH and CX bond breaking takes place. Rate determining step is only one step because the reaction itself is happening in single step. That step itself is the rate determining step. In that step itself, the CH bond is bro uh, breaking as well as CX bond also breaking. So what you can say, hence uh, rate of reaction will depend on the bond strength of these bonds. Rate of reaction will depend on bond strength of these bonds. That means if I have carbon iodine bond, that bond can be easily cleaved. So their rate will be high. If you have carbon fluorine bond, the fluoride is a very poor leaving group. Yes or no? The fluorine is a very poor leaving group. So obviously their you will not be having the transient state like alkene. There you will be having a carbon ion system. So if you have RA, RBR, RCL, RF, greater or good leaving group will have greater rate of E2 reaction. Reagents, we are going to use reagents, alcoholic OH, NaNH2 upon heating or sodamide, tertiary butoxide like CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CO minus upon heating. These are the reagents which we are going to use. That is a strong basis strong bases should be used why because in the rate determining step the concentration of base is directly proportional to concentration of the rate stereochemistry of e2 reaction e2 reaction is always anti anti elimination anti elimination occurs and more number of hydrogens which are in the anti direction to that of leaving group more will be the rate so E2, E2 reaction is anti-elimination. Leaving group and beta hydrogens must be anti to each other. Like look at this scenario. Here we have, this is bromine is the leaving group. And uh, this is alpha carbon, this is beta, this is also beta. On which beta carbon? We have hydrogen and bromine. They are on the opposite side. If you look at it here, on this beta carbon, methyl is in the same direction as that of bromine. So hydrogen should be opposite. Here hydrogen should be on the same direction. So from where the hydrogen can be picked up? If I give numbering beta 1, beta 2, from the beta 1 or beta 2? Beta, beta 1. Beta 1, because on the beta 1 carbon only, we have hydrogen which opposite to that of the leaving group. Yes or no? So there only anti-elimination is going to happen. So here you will get this type of product. Double bond will appear here. And now as soon as the double bond is formed, this methyl which was above the plane of the paper or which was towards our side, that will automatically come to the plane because this carbon becomes sp2 hybridized. Bromine has been lost. Base picked up the proton. CH electron has to come into loss of carbon bromine bond. Here we can have methyl as it is because that carbon is still sp3 hybridized. This is going to be the major product. Right? What happens? CH3, CHBr, CH2, CH3, alcoholic OH. So we have this scenario, CH3, CHBr, CHH, CH3, if OH minus alcoholic KOH, if OH minus picks up this proton, the CH electron energy comes into this carbon bromine leaves. There you will be getting CH3, CH double bond, CH, CH3. This is going to be 2 butene, which is going to the major product. We cannot have this proton picked up. There you will be getting 1 butene, which is going to have less number of hyperconjugative structures. So this will be minor. Sets of product or sets of product, which is a major product. And the other product is softmax product or minor product. Yes or no? Sets of product or sets of product, that is going to be the more stable alkene or more substituted alkene. More substituted. Less stable alkene or less substituted alkene. Less a substituted alkene. And in case if you are getting alkenes where the number of hyperconjugative structures are same, that is number of alpha hydrons are same, then what you have to compare? Like we have this scenario, CH3C, I think I have explained this example also earlier. 
CH3, C, CH3, double bond, CH2. How many alpha hydrons are there? Six. Six alpha hydrons, right? And one more compound, CH3, C, double bond, C, CH3, CH, CH. Out of these two, which is going to be more stable? Let us give this as first one, second one. In the second compound, how many alpha hydrons are there, students? Six. Six alpha hydrogens. In the first one, how many hyperconjugate structures? That is, how many alpha hydrons are there? Six alpha hydrogens. Six. How to compare now? Second. second one, why? So because yes, please. CH three C double bond C C H three C H two. This is a one compound. Okay, let me write in the next page. Okay, the compound given to you is CH3, C, CH3, double bond CH2, and CH3, C, double bond C, CH, CH, CH3. CH, CH, I think I have explained the same example in the class itself. If you remember, where the number of alpha hydrogens here also six alpha hydrogens, here also six alpha hydrogens. In that case, you have to draw the respect to hyperconjugative structure. So if you try to draw the hyperconjugative structure, hyperconjugative resonating structure, this CH electron density comes into the C double bond C pi electron density moves away, generating C double bond CH2, CH3, and hydrogen with a positive charge. And now carbon carbon double bond will be converted to single bond and CH2 with a negative charge on this carbon. And here there was no bond, it is a no bond resonating structure. Whereas if you try to write the respect to hyperconjugative structure here, the CH electron density comes into pi electron density moves away, generating negative charge on this carbon. C, CH3, single bond, CH, double bond, CH2, and CH, and there is no bond between CH2 and H, no bond resonating structure. Now, if you look at the hyperconjugative structure, the first case, in the first case, you are looking at carbanion, which is similar to your primary carbanion. Whereas in the second case, you are having a negative charge on the carbon, which is connected to methyl and also another carbon, which is a secondary carbanion. Out of primary carbanion and secondary carbanion, which should be more stable? Primary carbanion. Primary, primary carbanion more stable. So this is going to be more stable alkene. First one, okay? Whenever you have equal number of hyperconjugative structures or equal number of alpha hydrogens, then you have to look at the respect to stability of hyperconjugative structure by drawing the resonating structure. So if you try to draw the resonating structure in, including the alpha hydrogen, then you will be getting a respect to carbon ion, compare the stabilities of carbon ion, then you will get the right answer. When an alkyl halide has more, more than one type of beta hydrogen, mixture of products can be formed. Obviously, whenever we have more than one type of beta hydrogen, mixture of products can be formed. Out of the mixture of products, more substitute alkene is the major product. Out of the mixture, out of the mixture, more stable alkene is, more stable alkene is major. Right? Compare rate towards E2 in all the three cases. Compare rate towards E2. Rate of E2 directly proportional to stability of alkene. So if you, yeah, obviously, because if you do the E2 elimination in the compound C, you are getting aromatic nature. In the compound B, you will be getting resonance stabilization. In the compound A, we will get only one double bond. Yes or no? So if you try to compare, obviously, first uh, the C compound is aromatic. The B compound is going to be resonance stabilized. In the A compound, just a pi bond is obtained, which has hyperconjugative structures. If alkene stability is same, then rate of E2 directly proportional to number of beta hydrogen. If you are getting same type of alkene, yes or no, then rate of E2 that should be proportional to number of beta hydrogens available. Like you can go with the first option. 
CH3, CH2, CH2Br. If you do the E2 elimination, you will get what? You will get propane. Second option, like one bromopropane or two bromopropane upon treatment with a alkalic AOH produces same propane. But which will have greater rate? Same propane is obtained, same stability? Yes or no? So greater rate will be having for that compound where you will be having more number of beta hydrogens. Here this is the alpha carbon, this is beta, this is beta. Here you have three hydrogens, here also you have three hydrogens. Here you have alpha carbon, beta carbon. Here you have how many hydrogen? Two hydrogen. So if you look at the number of beta hydrogens, where we have more number of beta hydrogens in the second compound, so that will be having greater rate. Understood or not? Or we can also say in other words, like secondary alkyl halides will be having greater rate towards E2 elimination when compared to primary. Right or not, students? Two bromopropane, one bromopropane, both you are treating with alcoholic OH. In the both cases, you are getting same product, propane. But how to compare which will have greater rate? That alky, that bromopropane will have greater rate which has more number of beta hydrogens available for E2 elimination. Right? What is the major product here? Br, CH2, 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 CH3. One butene or two butene? Two butene. Two butene, right? Everyone? Yes. Yes. Sure. Think again once. One butene. The why? Two butene or one butene? Why? Because if you think of alcoholic OH, you have to always think of, you have to always think of what? E2 elimination. E2 elimination is a single step process. You should never cleave the carbon bromine bond, never generate a carbocation, never do rearrangement. That is all wrong. So here in the E2 elimination, alcoholic OH means the transition state looks like alkene. So you have CH2, Br, this is alpha carbon connected to beta carbon, only one beta carbon available. This is the beta carbon. CH2, CH3. From the beta carbon, OH minus picks up the proton, CH electron has comes into, you will get CH2 and a carbon bromine bond leaves, double bond CH, CH2, CH3. Only one beta carbon available. If I take a one bromobutane, I am getting, I am getting one butene as the major product, that's it. There is no possibility of two butene, right? If I have two, bromo, two bromobutane, then I do the alcoholic OH, then there's a possibility of two butane. Because you should never think of carbocation in E2 elimination. Alcoholic OH is E2 elimination, where the transient state looks like alkane. It is not a carbocation intermediate. Got it? So you get one butane as a major product. Here, what is the major product you get? What is the IUPAC name of the major product? Use the IUPAC name of the major product. I think I have given this example also. This is taking the stereochemistry into picture. So we have this is alpha carbon, this is beta, and this is also beta. On this beta carbon, methyl is away from us. So hydrogen should be towards us. Bromine is also towards us. So they are not anti to each other. So this hydrogen cannot be picked up. Here we have CH2. One hydrogen is away, other hydrogen is towards us. So OH minus. We will try to pick up the proton, which is opposite to that of bromine, uh, bromine that is leaving group. CH electron energy comes into carbon bromine leaves. You get what type of product? You get this type of alkene, which is nothing but how to name this alkene? 1, 2, 3, 3 methyl cyclohexene. Here, what you will get, students? Here, what you will get? Here you have hydrogen available here. Yes or no? Hydrogen also available here. So both the possibilities are there, but base picks up that proton only, which is going to be anti, but both cases anti-hydrogens are available. So, but now you have to think of more substrate alkene. So you'll be getting this product as a major product. Yes or no? So based on anti-elimination. based on anti-elimination.
along two products are going to be obtained out of which this is going to be the major here only one product is obtained because the anti elimination following if you follow anti elimination only this is the possibility the other product there is no possibility at all try to look at the compound here thch2 chcl chch3 chd alcoholic oh even though you can form a double bond this is alpha this is beta this is beta let us say this beta 1 beta 2 from which carbon like beta 1 carbon or beta 2 carbon the hydrogen is picked up beta 1 beta 1 only because you should not think of always more substitution because you have phenyl group here because of the phenyl group here if we get a double bond which is in conjugation with the pi electron instead of phenyl ring that is going to be more stable so this is a more stable we can say pi electron instead the pi bond formed is in conjugation with the pi bond formed is in conjugation with the phenyl ring this is going to the minor note geminal and vicinal dihalides react with nnh2 to give alkene as major product this reaction we have studied in, in the preparation of alkenes also like if you take geminal dihalides we have to treat with very strong base like nnh2 alcoholic oh alone is not sufficient so nnh2 will try to pick up the proton so nh2 minus will try to pick up this proton ch electron instead comes into carbon bromine bond leaves again nh2 minus will try to pick up this proton ch electron instead comes into carbon bromine bond leaves we generate r ch double bond ch br after that you get r c double bond ch is that clear or not geminal dihalide vicinal dihalide reacting with nnh2 to form alkene yes 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 right right very good geminal dihalide alcoholic oh alone you can treat with the nnh2 directly or first you can treat with alcoholic oh followed by nnh2 but only alcoholic oh cannot form your respective alkene oh minus picks up the proton ch electron instead comes into carbon bromine leaves nh2 minus picks up the proton ch electron instead comes into carbon bromine leaves okay alcoholic oh not preferred as stronger base required for elimination of vinylic bromides and we can have vicinal dihalides vicinal dihalide also you can do the same scenario you will be generating respect to alkene dehydrohalogenation of geminal and vicinal dihalides is used for the method of preparation of alkynes which is we have studied in the hydrocarbons d means removal hydrogen and halogen of a geminal and vicinal dihalides that will lead to the formation of alkene if i treat this alkene with he2 what happens he2 alkene immediately what should come to your mind he2 alkene you have seen and you are trying to add he2 salt immediately addition of water comes to your mind yes or no addition of water according to marconi goff rule and anti marconi goff rule here there is no scenario because symmetrical alkene so you can have r c double bond c coh chr this is nothing but enol type system enol can be tautomerized to form keto we have r c double bond o ch2r which is a ketonic group like from the geminal dihalide or vicinal dihalide i can produce alkene from the alkene i can produce a ketone from the ketone i can produce cyanohydrin from the cyanohydrin i can actually do the acidic hydrolysis to form respect to carboxylic acids like that i can convert one functional group to the other functional group and interlink different different reactions generally sets of alkene is formed as major product but in the following cases like what are the cases when bulky base is present case 2 when substrate is having a poor leaving group like fluorine nr2 plus and case 3 also you can write when there is extended conjugation when there is extended conjugation you have to go with the hoffmans alkene as a major product it is not about hoffman or sesen it is not about hoffman's alkene or sets of alkene it is all about the stability of transition state i have repeatedly said this many times earlier also we should not directly say hoffman's alkene or sets of alkene we all know that 
but what actually decides which alkene is going to be formed is the stability of the transition state when the bulky base is there that bulky base cannot go and pick up the proton from the carbon where we have more steady repulsions so it will go with the sideways whenever we have a poor leaving group then the transition state looks like carbon ion so more stable carbon ion we have to think of whenever there is a possibility of extended conjugation then the transition state may be resonance stabilized that path only you have to choose it all depends upon the stability of transition state students so case 1 when bulky base is present so we have tertiary butoxide so it's a very strong base ch3 c ch3 c ch3 o minus this will try to pick up the proton so we have this alpha carbon beta 1 beta 2 so out of which beta among beta 1 and beta 2 which beta carbon is going to be providing the hydrogen to the base beta 2 beta 2 cross terminal obviously less steric repulsions so leading to the formation of 1 butene this is going to be the major product which is also called as hoffman alkene right very good how to generate the respective alkoxide like tertiary butoxide if you want to produce how we can generate we have ch3 c ch3 coh we are treating with sodium sodium is a very strong base active metals are very strong bases alcohols are very weak acids active metals can react with alcohols acid base reaction can occur phenols can react with active metals as well as naoh but if you take a carboxylic acids they can even react with nahco3 so na can form na plus and electron is lost and you have ch3 c ch3 c ch3 coh and now we have na plus ion so whatever the oh electron and c we have that is going to be moving towards oxygen and oxygen is going to attack this na plus that means you will be generating ch3 c ch3 ch3 o minus na plus and you have h plus ion lost that h plus which is lost that will try to pick up the electron to form hydrogen atom so i can say h2 gas is going to be formed half mole yes or no so ch3 c ch3 c ch3 coh plus na gives ch3 c ch3 c ch3 o minus na plus plus half mole of h2 plus half mole of h2 and this is how the reactions are going to be done like why we have explained this reaction means to generate a tertiary butoxide we can actually treat tertiary butyl alcohol with a active metal like sodium so tertiary butoxide the base can be generated in this fashion so that tertiary butoxide you can now act as a uh, you can now act it as a base and do the elimination where hoffman's alkene can be produced write the major product here this is alpha carbon this is beta this is also beta this is also beta but the base is a bulky base bulky base picks up the proton from that carbon where we have minimal steric repulsions so that will pick up the proton from this terminal like beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 if i give which one which beta carbon is giving the proton beta 1 beta 1 will be giving so obviously you will get double bond ch2 outside of the ring that is going to be the respect to major product this will be major and it is minor and the same product you have treated with alcoholic oh what happens like if i give beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 2 and beta 3 are they same or different beta 2 and beta 3 they are same because of symmetry so beta 1 is the alkene uh, beta 1 carbon if it picks up the proton there you will get less substituted alkene whereas beta 2 and beta 3 produces more substituted alkene so in this case this will be the respect to major product and the minor product will be in this fashion minor product will be double bond ch2 is everything clear students so far yes sir this is all just repeated to study okay we have studied earlier also you can enjoy it now like all the points we are revising when substrate is having poor leaving group like fluorine nr3 plus like ch3 chf ch2 ch3 alcoholic oh now we have whenever we have a poor leaving group again we have to look at the stability of transient state the transient state looks like a carbon ion we get this as the major product that is one butene 
the reason is yes or no remove hydrogen from that beta carbon where negative charge is more stable this indicates transient state looks like carbon ion we'll write the transient states we have ch2 minus ch2 h is the right this ch2 h chf ch2 ch3 this molecule picked up by a base so base will try to pick up the proton ch electron energy is given to carbon ch2 minus single bond chf ch2 ch3 this is how your transient state looks like transition state looks like carbon ion so since the transition state looks like carbon ion more stable carbon ion is going to be the major product uh, leading so this is primary carbon ion which is more stable if i get a negative charge here that will be secondary carbon ion which is unstable carbon ion is also the intermediate in which other reaction carbon ion from the set of reactions whatever we have studied so far i'm not asking from the reactions which you have which we are studying above decarboxylation as of now yeah very good decarboxylation decarboxylation of beta keto acids is that carbon ion or six member transition state six member transition six member transition state right very good so now what happens this is alpha carbon this is beta carbon this is also beta carbon so we have to produce negative charge whenever we have poor leaving group carbon ion is the transition state you think of this carbon ion ch minus chf ch3 and the other carbon ion in this fashion ch2 chf ch2 minus which is more stable lower the second one is yeah the second one is actually resonance stabilized so resonance stabilized so obviously base will pick up this proton so you get a double bond which is in conjugation with the pi electron density this is going to be the respect to major product and this will be the minor product okay because the carbon ion whatever it is obtained that is actually resonance stabilized with the pi electron density of the phenyl ring because of that resonance stabilization you have this particular carbon ion more stable and obviously that will lead to the major product formation here what is going to happen so again nme3 it is actually a poor leaving group nr3 plus sr2 plus we have you will be having carbon ion so here you have negative charge and here you can have negative charge so negative charge on this carbon is more stable so obviously that will lead to the formation of one butene what are the poor leaving groups f nr3 plus sr2 plus these are poor leaving groups right students so here also we'll be getting one butene as the major product then comes the even elimination even elimination is E1 means unimolecular elimination, and it occurs in how many steps? Two steps. Two steps. Two steps. Very good. And uh, in the even elimination, in the rate of the reaction, does the rate depends upon the concentration of the base? No, sir. No, sir. No. Concentration of the base is not there. So, what type of bases we have to take? Weak base or strong base? Obviously, weak base. Weak base we have to take. And what are the more most commonly used weak bases? high water and alcohol okay the if you if you think of sn1 the in sn1 also we should take a weak nucleophile what are the more commonly taken weak nucleophiles water alcohol. and alcohol only so water and alcohol they can act as a weak nucleophile they can also act as a weak base when i can call them as acting as a weak nucleophile and when i can call them as acting as weak bases like whenever the temperature condition is mentioned then you have to do elimination in that condition they will be acting as weak bases whenever temperature is not mentioned then you have to think of think them as weak nucleophile and do the substitution because e1 and e2 e1 and e2 requires high temperature requires high temperature as bonds are cleaved okay whenever we have a strong base strong base or some set of bases alkalic oh nnh2 alkoxides tertiary butoxides these are strong bases whenever strong bases are given you have to always think of e2 
whenever weak uh, bases are given like alcohol and water they can also act as weak nucleophile whenever temperature is mentioned you have to think of even elimination temperature not mentioned you have to think of sn1 reaction substitution and sn2 whenever you have to do whenever we have a strong nucleophile whenever you have a strong nucleophile is a two step reaction carbocation intermediate form rearrangement is possible ch3 cch3 cch3 cx first step is the slow ionization to form a carbocation rd rds rate determining step so we get a carbocation like this so in the rate determining step the carbon halogen bond is going to be cleaved so what type of solvent i have to choose polar protic or polar aprotic polar protic why because if i take a polar protic solvent the polar protic solvent will actually ionize this bond easily the carbon halogen bond whatever you have that bond can be easily ionized in the presence of polar protic solvent because the polar protic solvents can actually uh, solvate the cation as well as anion so they will be helping in ionizing the bond so we get a carbocation so polar protic solvents are used and base will now try to pick up the proton to form a respective alkene remove leaving group and form carbocation first step check rearrangement whenever carbocation is formed always check the rearrangements then form double bond then you form the double bond next stage is kinetics of the reaction radius uh, rds rate determining step is formation of carbocation in that step only we have alkyl halide so rate is directly proportional to concentration of alkyl halide only so rate is independent of concentration of base rate is independent independent of concentration of base so so weak bases are preferred for weak bases are preferred for e1 elimination molecular rate and order both are going to be one e1 means unimolecular elimination reaction unimolecular elimination reaction this is all basic part rate of e1 is directly proportional to stability of carbo carbocation so e2 if you pick at the order 3 degree greater than 2 degree then 1 degree e1 if you look at the order again it is going to be 3 degree then 2 degree then 1 degree that is tertiary carbocation tertiary alkyl halide has a greater rate to undergo both e1 as well as e2 but the other conditions are going to decide whether e1 is going to happen or e2 is going to happen what are the other condition like base temperature we have to maintain both the cases base has to be a stronger base in that e2 will occur if a base is a weaker base then only e1 will occur so rate of e1 is also directly proportional to stability of carbocation form similar to your sn1 so tertiary alkyl halide secondary alkyl halide primary alkyl halide so tertiary alkyl halide will have greater rate than secondary and then primary because here you will be getting ch3 c ch3 c ch3 c plus ch3 ch plus ch3 ch3 ch2 plus and why this carbocation is more stable more hyperconjugate more hyperconjugate structures always remember there are few principles the highest uh, stability is given to dancing resonance then aromatic natures like you can write down the order dancing resonance is going to be highly stable then positive charge involved in resonance leading to aromatic involved in resonance leading to aromatic nature that is aromaticity and after that you have more resonating structures then you have more hyperconjugate structures so this is the order based on which you have to compare this is the order based on which you have to just compare how the stability of carbocation is going to happen this dancing resonance will be generally present in cyclopropyl systems like this carbocations are going to be extremely stable and after that you have a seven membered ring 
positive charge in resonance. Okay, so these systems are going to be extremely stable students because here whatever the p orbitals we have, those p orbitals they will bend whenever they bend because of cyclopropyl ring, the p orbitals are actually slightly bent because of ring strain and when they bend and they when, when they involve in the positive charge, here the, there is a possibility of double bond formation. Whenever the p orbital is turned in this fashion, yes or no, this p orbital, this is going to be slightly bent, it will be somewhat like this and that is in positive charge, that, that is in resonance with the positive charge where the pi bond is going to be formed. Because the p orbitals are bent, they look like dancing and that is why the name dancing resonance. And in the cyclopropyl ring systems, wherever we have this type of bending and more formation of double bond, those types of carbocations are extremely stable. After that, if a, even if we have a seven member ring where a positive charge is in resonance with the pi electron and still leading to aromatic nature, that will be more stable carbocation. Then you can compare the more number of resonating structures and then you can look at the more number of hyperconjugated structures. Based on this, you can compare stabilities of carbocations, right? In the rate determining step, CX bond breaking takes place. Hence, rate of a reaction will be depending upon bond strength of the reaction. Obviously, good leaving group will have greater E1 similar to your respect to E2 elimination. If you have a good leaving group, because in the rate determining step, again, we have a carbon halogen bond is going to be cleaved. So, Ri will be having greater rate towards E1, then RBR, then RCL, and then RF. Reagents used, as I have told you, weak bases, H2O, ROH are weak bases, and the temperature condition has to be mentioned. Temperature has to be mentioned. If not, substitution can be done. If we do not mention temperature, we can do substitution. If I mention temperature, you have to do elimination. Example, look at this reaction. The same type of reaction we have studied earlier where I have just mentioned H2O, yes or no? So here H2O upon heating, so what happens in the first step? So we have carbon iodine bond is going to be cleaved. Whenever carbon iodine bond is going to be cleaved, you get a carbocation. So this carbocation is going to be the more stable carbocation because already six member ring is there and tertiary carbocation. Now H2O should act as a base. It is not a nucleophile. So this is alpha carbon. So here we have hydrogen, here we have hydrogen, here also we have hydrogen. So H2O will try to pick up the proton. H2O, H2O uses its lone pair of electrons. As soon as it uses its lone pair, the CH electron entity comes into. So it, it has used its lone pair of electron to pick up the proton and it forms H3O plus and it will lead to the formation of such type of alkene. This is the alkene and the major product. Okay, this is going to be respect to alkene. And this will be the major product because more substituted alkene and this will be the minor product, less substituted alkene. Clear student, everyone got this or not? Yes, sir. Yes, right. Dehalogenation of pisanol dihalide. Dehalogenation is also an example of E2 elimination. Like whenever you take zinc dust upon heating, like uh, carbon bromine, carbon bromine upon treatment with zinc dust upon high temperature, what happens? We have the carbon bromine bonds, both are going to be broken. You get a carbon double bond carbon and ZmBr2 going to be formed. Why only we preferably use zinc means zinc has a greater tendency to undergo Zn plus 2, that is, it has a greater ten tendency to undergo oxidation. Zinc has a greater tendency to undergo oxidation based on the electrode potential. The electrode potential depends upon what factors. Radius ratio. Radius ratios ultimately. Why? Because the electrode potential, if you have to compare, you have to think of what type of crystallite structure it possesses, how much enthalpy of atomization it has, what is the ionization energy 1, ionization energy 2, respect to hydration enthalpies. If you think of uh, heat of atomizations, there the crystallite structure have plays a major role. The crystallite structure is ultimately depending upon radius ratios, right? And if you have this reaction again, both the bromines are going to be lost, taken by Zn in the form of ZnBr2 and you will get a cyclohexene. This is going to be the respect to major product. Dehalogenation of vicinal dihalides is an example 
is also an example of E2 reaction, not E1, E2. That means it happens in a single step. And directly, you will be having respect to alkenes are going to be formed. Is that clear, students? Is everything clear so far? Yes. Yes, right. So let us think of another reactions like where you have a competition. The competition between SN1, SN2, E1, E2 can happen. So that is very, very important. Like all are possible. Whenever I am taking, taking a particular alkyl halide and if I try to do the reaction, you can do SN1, SN2, E1, E2, but there are some set of conditions under which you have to decide which is going to be preferably happening. And this reaction we know CHCl3 treated with Ag upon heating, you will get respect to acetylene. When chloroform is actually heated in the presence of silver powder, acetylene is going to be obtained. This will lead to the formation of HC triple bond CH. Right? After this, whatever I am talking is competition. There exists always a competition between SN1, SN2, E1 and E2 reactions. R CH2 CH2X. This can this carbon which is connected to halogen that can undergo SN1, SN2, or E1, E2. First reactivity order of alkyl had SN2 is primary, then secondary, then tertiary. SN1, E1, E2 all have same order or not? SN1 is 3 degree, then 2 degree, then 1 degree. E1 is 3 degree, 2 degree, 1 degree. E2 is also 3 degree, then 2 degree, then 1 degree. SN2 will be 1 degree, then 2 degree, then 3 degree based on steric repulsions, SN2 steric, steric repulsions, SN1 carbocation, carbocation intermediate, E1 again carbocation, E2 alkene like transition states, alkene like TS. So based on these only we are comparing what is the respect to reactivity of alkyl halides. And Rx plus alkali KOH, NaNH2, tertiary butoxide, whenever these three were given to you, alkali KOH, NaNH2, tertiary butoxide, you always think of E2. And here alkoxide is not mentioned, that will define. Whenever alkali KOH, NaNH2, tertiary butoxide are given to you, always think of E2, right? First, we are going with the primary alkyl halide. If I have primary alkyl halide, what are the options I have? Four options, SN1, E1, SN1, SN2, E1, E2, okay. SN2, E2, SN1, E1, these are the four choices. Primary alkyl halide will undergo mainly SN2 because it has very less steric repulsions or not. Primary alkyl halide will undergo mainly SN2 because it, because it has very less steric repulsions. Generally, no SN1 or E1. Why? Because primary carbocations are not so stable or not so stable. So, whenever we have primary alkyl halide, we, can, we have to think of SN2 and E2 in some cases. When we have to think of E2 students? So, sterically hindered alkyl halide. Like it is a primary alkyl halide only. Like CH3, CH2, CH2X is a primary alkyl halide. Alpha carbon, that is the carbon which halogen is connected is only connected to one other alkyl group. But sterically hindered means this is beta carbon. On the beta, you can have substitution. Sterically hindered Rx plus a strong base. What are the strong base? NH2 minus, OR minus, CH3 minus. These are some strong bases. CH3 minus, OR minus, NH2 minus. Sterically hindered primary alkyl halide and a strong base that will lead to elimination. If not, it will undergo substitution. Everyone understood this point or not? Primary alkyl halide will not generally undergo SN1 or E1 because primary carbocations are not so stable. It can undergo SN2 mainly and E2 can also be undergone under some conditions. When it will undergo E2? Whenever we have a sterically hindered primary alkyl halide that is whenever we have beta branching so there's a nucleophile cannot go and attack in that condition and whenever we have strong base then there's a possibility of e2 elimination also write down the products here example first question 
CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, Br. What is going to happen in the first condition? What type of alkyl halide it is? Primary alkyl halide. It is a primary alkyl halide, but on the beta position, you have a branching. So, it is sterically hindered. We have Ca2H5O minus. It is a strong base. C2H5O minus is a strong base. Primary for primary alkyl halide, RO minus is also a strong base. So, this RO minus will try to pick up the proton leading to the formation of alkene. So, it picks up the proton from the beta carbon leading to the formation of respect to 2 methyl propane. You will get what type of product? CH3, C, CH3, double bond CH2. It is nothing but 2 methyl propene. But the same reaction you do here. CH3, CH2, CH2, Br treated with C2H5O minus Na plus. It is a primary alkyl halide. Primary alkyl halide. This is also primary alkyl halide. Primary alkyl halide, but on the beta position, do we have a branching? No, sir. No branching. So C2H5O minus will now act as a nucleophile or it will act as a base. Nucleophile. It will now act as a nucleophile. It will undergo SN2, not E2. So C2H5O minus will try to attack this particular carbon. Carbon bromine leaves generating CH3, CH2, CH2, O, C2H5. That means for primary alkyl halide, you remember the alkoxide RO minus cannot always act as a base. It can also act as a nucleophile. When it will act as a base for primary alkyl halide, whenever we have beta branching, whenever we have beta branching, when we do not have beta branching, it can act as nucleophile. Got it? Look at this example, CH3, CH2, CH2, Br, alcoholic OH. What type of alkyl halide is primary alkyl halide? Primary alkyl halide. What are the very strong bases I have told you? Alcoholic OH, NaNH2, tertiary butoxide, CH3, C, CH3, C, CH3, O minus Na plus. It doesn't matter what type of alkyl halide is given to you. Whenever you find these, you have to think of? E2. Think of E2 only. So it's a primary alkyl halide and we are treating with alcoholic OH, very strong base. Now, will I do the substitution or elimination? You only have to do so OH minus picks up the proton. I'll, I'll get to the formation of respective propene. So I'll get CH3, CH double bond CH2. But whenever I have RO minus, alkoxide, primary alkyl halide alkoxide, alkoxides are not very strong bases as you compare with this. So that alkoxides can undergo elimination as well as substitution. They will undergo substitution when there is no beta branching. They will undergo elimination when there is a beta branching. So you had a propane here. CH3, CH2, CHBr, CH3, what type of alkyl halide is? It is primary. secondary alkyl halide. Primary or secondary? Secondary <laughs> alkyl halide. So we have CH3, C, CH3, CH3, O minus. What is it? Tertiary butoxide. Tertiary butoxide always you think of elimination, E2 elimination. What type of product is going to be obtained as a major product? Butyl. Butyl or butanin? Bulky base. Butanine. Butanine. Okay. Bute is going to be obtained as a major product because it's a bulky base. Okay. So although in the example of primary alkyl halide, we have given a secondary alkyl halide, we'll look at secondary alkyl halide separately. So for primary alkyl halide or any other alkyl halide, whenever we have alcoholic OH or NH2 or tertiary butoxide, you have to think of E2 only. But for alkoxide, you can think of SN2 and E2. When we have to think of SN2, when there is only uh, no branching at the beta position. When there is branching at the beta position, you have to think of E2. Right? Secondary alkyl halide next. Secondary means you can undergo SN2, E2, SN1, E1. All four possibilities are there. SN2, E2, SN1, E1. Alkyl halide, a strong base, E2. Strong base here, CH3 minus, OR minus, NH2 minus. Here also you have to think of E2 only. Uh, SN1 and E1, they are also possible. Like whenever we have alkyl halide treated with H2 or ROH, SN1, E1, in that SN1 or E1, we require either weak nucleophile or weak base. What are the weak nucleophiles and weak bases which we generally encounter in our 12th standard? Uh, 
water and alcohol. Whenever we have water or alcohol, without any heating condition, you have to do SN1. Water or alcohol, with heating condition, you have to do E1. Okay. Alkyl halide treated with water, hydrolysis or alcohol. No heating condition mentioned, then you have to do SN1 is major. Alkyl halide treated with water or alcohol, with heating condition, then you have to mention E1. Alkyl halide strong base like NH2 minus OR minus CH3 minus, then you have to write E2. If we do not have strong base, the other nucleophiles are going to be there, strong nucleophiles. Under that, you have to do SN2. All are possible here. Let us look at the writing of products, different products in different sets of reactions. Look at this case. What happens? What type of alkyl halide it is? Primary secondary. or secondary? Mm -hmm. Secondary alkyl halide. Secondary mm -hmm. alkyl halide, they have mentioned H2O. H2O, no heating condition. So what do you have to do? SN1. 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 So form a carbocation first. Do the rearrangements. 1 comma 2 hydride shift. We generate more stable carbocation. Now we have to think of H2O attacking. Substitution, right? Nucleophilic substitution. So CH3 oxygen will have two OH bonds with one lone pair and a positive charge. Loss of H plus occurs to form respect to alcohol. That is going to happen in the first case. That is easily accepted. Now we have this type of alkyl. What type of alkyl it is? CH3, CHBr, CH2, CH3. Secondary alkyl halide. What secondary alkyl halide? RO minus will act as a nucleophile or it will act as a Base. 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 We cannot undergo SN2, right? Because of three repulsions. Only for primary alkyl halide, when there is no beta branching, then only RO minus acts as a nucleophile. For secondary alkyl halide, RO minus will act as a base only. It will form. RO minus is not a bulky base. So it will try to pick up the proton in such a way such that sets of alkene obtained. So what is going to happen in the first case? What is the product here? Butane in or butane? Butane. Butane. Butane, not one in because RO minus is not a bulky base. NaCN, Na plus Cn minus. Cn minus is acting as a nucleophile or it will act as a uh, base. Secondary alkaloid we have Cn minus, OH minus. They are not going to be weak bases or weak nucleophiles. So we can eliminate SN1 and E1. You have to think of SN2 or E2. Now, whether cyanide ion will act as a strong nucleophile or strong base, it will act as a cyanide ion is not a strong base. It is not a very strong base. So, it will act as a strong nucleophile only. So, it will undergo SN2. SN2 will happen leading to the formation of respective SN2. First one is going to be E2. And aqueous KOH means. A plus and OH minus, aqueous, nucleophilic substitution only. Again, here also you are going to have SN2 or SN1. SN2 will happen. SN, SN2 will happen, not SN1, because we have OH minus N as a nucleophile. So, strong nucleophile, not a weak nucleophile. So, first case you will get E2, alkene is obtained. Second case you get cyanide, SN2, cyanide is present there. And third case you will get a OH present at that particular carbon atom. So we have SN2 happening. I am saying it as SN2. Yes or no? Because strong nucleophile is there. Tertiary alkyl halide. Tertiary alkyl halide. Now think of students. All the four possibilities SN2, E2, SN1, E1. All four possibilities you can list out. SN2, E2, SN1, E1. No SN2. SN2 is not happening. U2 can happen in some cases. Very strong basis. Okay. Very strong basis whenever you think of. E2 can happen because tertiary alkyl halide will undergo. For E2 also, tertiary alkyl halides have a greater rate for undergoing E2 whenever we have a strong base. And SN1 and E1, both can happen. When will SN1 occur? Whenever we have a weak nucleophile and no temperature. When will E1 occur? Weak base and temperature has to mention. Temperature condition has to be mentioned, then only we can think of E1 or E2. 
Now think of these reactions. What type of alkaloid is CH3, CBr, CH3, CH3? It is a tertiary alkyl halide. Tertiary alkyl halide treated with H2O, no heating. So what it will undergo? SN1. SN1. So carbocation form. So that will be replaced with OH group. So we get exactly bromine replaced by OH. CH3, C plus CH3, CH3. In the presence of water, it will form respect to alcohol. CH3, OH. CH3, OH is weak nucleophile. Yes or no? It is a weak nucleophile and no heating condition mentioned. So that's why I'm calling it as nucleophile. Same as H2O, again it is undergoing SN1. So you get carbocation, then undergoing substitution leading to the formation of respect to same. OCH3 is going to be substituted now because lone pair of electrons and oxygen, they will attack the respective carbon or you can say this attack. Lone pair of electrons and oxygen, they will attack this particular carbon leading to the formation of oxygen connected to CH3 and OH bond. And finally, that loss of H plus will occur to form OCH3. CH3O minus, CH3O minus is a strong base or strong nucleophile. Will it act as a nucleophile for the tertiary alkyl? Cannot act as a nucleophile. CH triple bond C minus. CH triple bond, like a, CH triple bond CH is weak acid. Weak acid. So, respect to H plus plus H C triple bond C minus is going to be strong base. CH3 O minus strong bases, CH triple bond C minus strong base, NH2 minus strong base, NH2 minus strong base, cyanide ion, nucleophile, cyanide, cyanide ion acts as a strong base for tertiary alkaloid. It, because tertiary alkaloid have very high repulsions, no, C, CN minus cannot go and substitute at all. CN minus, NH2 minus, HC, triple bond C minus, CH3 O minus, all these will undergo E2 only. Understood now, cyanide ion in the case of secondary alkyl, it is acting as a nucleophile. But whenever you talk of tertiary alkyl halide, the repulsions are even more high. It will never undergo SN2. SN2 possibility is not there. E SN1, E1 possibility is also not there because they are strong. They are strong, either we nucleophile or base, that is the secondary issue. They are strong because they are negatively charged already. It cannot act as a nucleophile, no question. Why? Because already steel repulsions are high. So CN minus has to undergo E2 only to form respect to alkene in the four cases. Understood now competition between SN1, SN2, E1, E2 for all the cases? Yes, sir. Okay. So cyanide ion, whenever we have tertiary alkyl halide, it will act as a base only because steel repulsions are very high. So in that condition, it will act as a strong base leading to the formation of respect to alkene. Uh, sir. Yes, please. Sir, why is NH2 minus E2? NH2 minus is a very strong base. No, NH2, sodamide. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir, NH2 minus is a very strong base. Then after the competition between SN1, SN2, E1, E2 for different types of alkyl halide, we look at the reactions of alkyl halide with metal students. Alkyl halide react with the metals to form respect to Grignard agents. So Grignard agent preparation and chemical reaction. Rx plus Mg in the presence of dry ether, it will form RMGx. CH3Mg plus uh, CH3Br plus Mg gives rise to CH3MgBr in the presence of dry ether. Dry ether is actually a Polar dry ether is actually a polar aprotic solvent. Polar aprotic solvent. In the presence of magnesium, alkyl halides will undergo insertion reaction to form respect to Grignard reagents. pHBr plus Mg in the presence of dry ether that will also react to form respect to pH MgBr. Yes or no? Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So, these are the metals. Yes or no? Grignard reagent behaves like a base, reacts with compounds containing acidic hydrogen. What is acidic hydrogen? 
Acidic hydrogen is a hydrogen connected directly to more electronegative elements. What are those? These elements. Hydrogen connected to nitrogen, hydrogen connected to oxygen, hydrogen connected to sulfur, hydrogen connected to fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, hydrogen connected to carbon in some cases. What is this carbon? Either sp hybridized carbon or we have this famous example, most common example, this hydrogen. Because if that hydrogen is that hydrogen is picked up, you get this particular carbonion, like uh, which is going to be aromatic in nature. The hydrogen connected to more electronegative elements like nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and all halogens, and carbon in some cases, that is said to be acidic hydrogen. Whenever we have acidic hydrogen, Grignard reagent behaves as a base. Whenever we do not have acidic hydrogen, Grignard reagent behaves as a nucleophile. Grignard reagent can behave both as a base as well as nucleophile. It depends upon the substrate, whether it has acidic hydrogen or it do not have acidic hydrogen. Is that point clear to everyone or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, right. So now hydrogen connected to chlorine, hydrogen connected to bromine, hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen, hydrogen to nitrogen, hydrogen to nitrogen, hydrogen to oxygen. All these are acidic hydrogens. In the case of acidic hydrogen, R minus is acting as a base, Grignard agent. That will pick up the proton. So R minus picks up the proton means you get RH only. That means all canes are obtained. All canes are obtained. And we also mentioned what is a MGXH because RMGX, MGX is lost and hydrogen connected to some other part, right? Like chlorine or bromine or OH. Z is the remaining part of the reagent. The remaining part of the reagent is Z. As I have told you this example, so this will actually, this hydrogen is also acidic hydrogen because it uh, will lead to the aromatic nature. And sp hybridized carbon, sp hybridized carbon connected to hydrogen, that will also cleave to form respect to carbon ion. So again, you are getting the, the hydrogen connected to sp hybridized carbon is also acidic hydrogen. These are the other two examples where Grignard reagents will again behave as a base, not as a nucleophile. Right. Understand this reaction. What is the major part of this particular reaction? Try to solve all of you. What is the major part of this reaction? Benzene because pH minus whatever it is there. The pH minus will try to pick up the proton. Why I am calling that as a proton? Because hydrogen connected to oxygen. So you get benzene. Second case. Deuterium is connected to OD. So deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. Again, pH minus picks up the deuterium, deuteride ion, forming C6H5D. CH3, MgBr, C2H5OH. Hydrogen connected to oxygen, oxygen connected to C2H5, C2H5 group. Hydrogen connected to oxygen is acidic hydrogen. CH3 minus will behave as a, a nucleophile. Uh, CH3 minus will behave as a base, not as a nucleophile. It picks up the proton forming CH3H, which is equivalent to CH4. And along with that, you get MgBr OC2H5. So with the Grignard reagent, reacts with the ethanol or absolute alcohol to form respect to alkane only. Respect to alkanes only. This is the first reaction. Reaction of alkyl halide. Reaction of alkyl halide uh, with the metals. And one more reaction, which you can think of is Woods reaction. Woods reaction, Woods Fittig reaction, all those you can include. Alkyl halide will react with sodium in the presence of dry ether to form respect to alkane of even number of carbon atoms only. Rx will lead to the formation of R dot plus X dot. So R dot and R dot will combine to, with each other to form R and R. It is a higher alkane. And to do this type of reaction, whatever the alkyl halide you have taking, that alkyl halide only, the alkyl group present in the alkyl halide only will be repeated. If you take mixture of alkyl halide, then you will be getting mixed woods reaction. That means mixture of products are going to be acting. When you take a mixture of alkyl halide, then you will get mixture of products. Whenever we have mixture of products, separation again becomes difficult. Separation of that mixture into simple compound again becomes difficult. Is that clear students? So far everything? 
Yes. Sir. Yes, right. So then comes the methods of preparations of haloarenes. Up to now we have seen about alkyl halides. Now haloarenes we will talk of. Haloarenes means what? The halogen is now going to be connected to the phenyl ring. Any one reaction you can think of haloarene from aromatic hydrocarbon. Like from benzene we can react. Most famous reactions, halogenation of benzene, electrophilic substitution reaction. If I take, if I can take benzene and reduce with halogen X2 in the presence of FeX3, what happens? X2 plus FeX3 will lead to the formation of X plus and FeX4 minus. So pi electron density attacks X plus, it will lead to the formation of respective intermediate sigma complex or VLAN intermediate that FeX4 minus will try to pick up the proton. The first step, attack of the pi electron density to the electrophile, there is nothing but RDS. So this CH bond is going to be broken in the second step, leading to the formation of respective aromatic compound back and FeX3 is reached back along with this, HX is obtained. So electrophilic substitution reaction I can do, halogenation. Benzene plus X2 in the presence of Lewis acid, will form respect to halobenzene plus HX is going to be obtained and Lewis acid is also released back. This is nothing but your example of example of electrophilic substitution reaction ESR. It is an example of electrophilic substitution reaction. From benzene diazonium salt, Sandmeyer reaction, anyone remember from benzene diazonium salt how we can prepare? How can you prepare benzene diazonium salt at the first point? Uh, NaNO2 and HCl. Anilin, if you treat with NaNO2 in the presence of HCl, it will form respect to benzene diazonium salt, N2 plus Cl minus. How is this happening? Anilin, when you treat with the NaNO2 in the presence of HCl, you get benzene diazonium salt. I'll explain the mechanism now. You try to look carefully. NaNO2 in the presence of HCl produces what? NaNO2 in the presence of HCl will form HNO2 nitrous acid. That HNO2 will have the structure N double bond to OH. Again, we have H plus. Lone pair of electrons present on oxygen, they pick up the proton. As soon as they pick up the proton, you get N double bond to oxygen only one lone pair, two OH bonds and a positive charge. This mechanism again is going to be repeated in the nitrogen and its compounds. I'll ask a question, you have to answer there. This OH bond, like uh, oxygen plus a positive bond, uh, oxygen plus a positive charge, oxygen nitrogen bond is there, right? That sigma electron density is going to give to oxygen because water is going to be lost. You generate N double bond with a positive charge of nitrogen and the water is released. So I can say N double bond plus is the N double bond low with a positive charge of nitrogen. It is nothing but the nitrosonium ion nitrosonium ion which is electrophile which is the electrophile let us complete this reaction first okay anilin we have anilin can write as ph and h2 so that we can finally write ph as ch by group ph and h2 i am writing so that we can easily understand and we have N double bond with a positive charge of nitrogen. Can I say lone pair of electron present on nitrogen, they are going to attack the positively charged nitrogen. That is going to happen in the first step. It will lead to the formation of pH, NH2, NH bonds are there. Nitrogen has a positive charge now and nitrogen single bond nitrogen and nitrogen doubly bonded with oxygen. The positive charge on this nitrogen has been nullified. Why? Because it has gained the electron density. Nitrogen which has lost, lost the lone pair, it will get a positive charge. Nitrogen bearing a positive charge is unstable and we have chloride ion in the reaction mixture that chloride ion will pick up this proton. NH electron density will be given to nitrogen leading to the formation of pH NH. Nitrogen po nitrogen's positive charge has been lost and it gained the lone pair N double bond O. And this will now be attacking water or we can say H plus HCl is there in the reaction mixture NaNO2 and HCl. So lone pair of electrons present on oxygen, they will attack the H plus. As soon as the lone pair of electron present on oxygen attack H plus, you will form pH, NH, lone pair of electrons and nitrogen, 
n double bond o oxygen has two lone pairs now only one lone pair and oh bond and a positive charge positive charge on oxygen is unstable so what happens is lone pair of electrons and nitrogen will come into like lone pair pi resonance it will lead to the formation of ph nh bond as it is nitrogen used its lone pair so positive charge n double bond n nitrogen oxygen will now have a single bond oxygen being in its lone pair and oh bond as it is again if you look at this carefully nh bond is there and lone pair of electron turned on oxygen nh electron is moving towards nitrogen to neutralize the positive charge so lone pair of electrons and oxygen picks up this proton leading to the formation of phn nitrogen regains its lone pair n double bond n oxygen has only one lone pair now but two oh bonds and a positive charge H2O is a good leaving group. So what happens? Lone pair of electrons and nitrogen comes into NO bond is left. So we get pH N triple bond N with a positive charge on this nitrogen, and this hole will be developing electrostatic force of attraction with Cl minus. This is nothing but your C6H5 N2 plus N triple bond N with a positive charge and Cl minus. Benzene diazonium chloride. Is that clear, students? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, no? Primary amines react with the NaNO diastasis reaction. Primary amines, aliphatic or aromatic primary amines, aliphatic or aromatic primary amines react with a ben, react with NaNO in the presence of HCl at lower temperatures like 0 to 5 degrees to form respect to benzene diazonium chlorides or diastasis reaction is going to happen. These benzene diazonium chlorides they can actually replace the nucleophile on the phenyl nucleophile on the electron rich phenyl ring they are unstable the benzene diazonium chlorides are unstable but why we are preparing them because they provide as a path to actually substitute a nucleophile on the electron rich benzene ring if you think of benzene ring benzene ring already has the pi electron density or not if i want to prepare a halobenzene i have to substitute an i have to substitute a nucleophile halogen on the pi electron density that is, I have to substitute a more electronegative atom on the already presence, already much electron density benzene ring. That is very difficult. So, to substitute that, we are choosing this path of preparation of benzene diazonium chloride. This benzene diazonium chloride will undergo loss of N2 gas greatly. Why? Because a nitrogen nitrogen triple bond can be formed. A triple bond between two nitrogen atoms is ultimately more stable. So, this N2 plus Cl minus can also lead to the formation of respect to phenyl cation where the nucleophile can substitute. The phenyl cations are unstable, but how they are prepared? They are actually prepared by this path of benzene diazonium chloride. I am not supposed to write phenyl cation directly, but the nucleophile will directly attack because phenyl cation will not exist in this manner. Rather, what happens is nucleophile, whatever it is there that will attack this carbon, the N2 gas is lost. So we have the substitution in this manner, nucleophile and N2 gas and Cl minus. N2 gas is produced also, entropy of the system is also increased. Something which is increasing entropy of the system that is spontaneous in nature. Okay. So this was the mechanistic approach. So from benzene diazonium salt, like benzene diazonium chloride N2 plus Cl minus, they upon treatment with Cu2, Cl2 in the presence of HCl, the chloride ion being a nucleophile, it can easily substitute. If I do the same reaction with HCl only and treat uh, some OH group here, is that going to happen? No. The nucleophilic substitution and aromatic ring is happening because of the presence of N2 plus Cl minus because that is a very good living group because that will produce N2 gas. Okay, understand this meaning. So this is nothing but your Sandmeyer reaction. Cu2, Cl2 in the presence of HCl or Cu2, Br2 in the presence of HBr. Whenever they are treated with benzene diazonium chloride, they form respect to chlorobenzene or bromobenzene and N2 gas is released. You can do with Cu, Cn also. Cu, Cn in the presence of HCn also. You will generate respect to cyanide or nucleophilic substitution is going to happen. But you cannot prepare hydrobenzene in the same way. To prepare iodobenzene, we have to treat with the Ki. Okay, replacement of diazonium group by iodine does not require the presence of cuprous halide and is done simply by shaking the diazonium salt with the potassium iodide. 
with the with the ki the k plus and i minus the i minus can easily substitute and n2 can be lost we do not require cuprous halides is that clear and you can prepare fluorobenzene also but that fluorobenzene preparation you will take through hbf4 how to prepare fluorobenzene means you take benzene diazonium chloride treat this with the hbf4 you will generate a n2 plus now this instead of cl minus bf4 minus will be developing electrostatic force of attraction with n2 plus when you heat it greatly then you will be generating respect to fluorobenzene and n2 gas is released along with that bf3 is produced boron trifluoride is that clear students this is the way to actually prepare chlorobenzene bromobenzene iodobenzene and fluorobenzene using the path of benzene diazonium chlorides right electrophilic substitution reactions of halorins if you take halorins what i have told you the halorins they are ortho para directing or meta directing ortho para directing the direction of the electrophile is decided by mesomeric effect whereas reactivity is decided by reactivity of halobenzene yeah that is decided by inductive effect so whenever i take uh, halobenzene like chlorobenzene treat with chcl in the presence of alcl3 what product i will getting chcl alcl3 means electrophile is ch3 plus here we have th3 c double bond o plus h2so4 means you will get so3 that is going to be substituted and on what positions it is ortho para directing para substitution is going to happen not the ortho because of steric repulsions okay so cl is ortho para directing okay electrophile position is dominated by is dominated by mesomeric effect whereas reactivity whereas reactivity of haloarenes is controlled by inductive effect and we all know why the ch3 c double bond with a positive charge on carbon is stable because its resonating structure will have complete octet electronic configuration right students you take a uh, uh, chlorobenzene treated with cl2 in the presence of fcl3 hno3 and h2s4 again cl plus is going to be the electrophile here no2 plus is going to be the electrophile here so substitution is going to happen at the respect to para position okay para product is the major is major to maintain due to minimum steric repulsions para product that is going to be major to have or to maintain minimum steric repulsions like that you can actually control the respect to reactivity of chlorobenzene chlorobenzene will undergo electrophilic substitution reactions only halobenzenes will undergo electrophilic substitution reactions only and they will also undergo nucleophilic substitution but that nucleophilic substitution will be undergoing by addition elimination type we'll discuss that as well nucleophilic substitution reaction nucleophilic aromatic substitution and when you compare the same nucleophilic substitution with the alkyl halide and aryl halide which will undergo greater rate alkyl halide and aryl halide which will have greater rate for nucleophilic substitution alkyl halide alkyl alkyl halide because aryl halides they will not undergo nucleophilic substitution easily because of many reasons can you name any few aryl halides are yeah very good aryl halides are extremely less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution reaction and reactivity orders alkyl halides is much greater when compared to aryl halide reasons this carbon halogen bond in aryl halides exhibits partial double bond character yesterday i have told you one more reason electronegative difference is low or not reasons if you go with the cx bond acquires partial double bond character due to resonance as a result bond cleavage in haloarenes is difficult than haloalkanes that is reason number 
and you can think of electronegativity difference difference in hybridization of carbon atom in cx bond this carbon is actually sp2 hybridized this carbon is sp3 hybridized so here what i can say electronegative difference is less and thus cx bond is less polar bond is less polar any other reasons you can think of phenyl cation phenyl cation is highly unstable any other reason you can think of the nucleophile will experience nucleophile will experience more repulsion experience more steric hindrance from the phenyl group there are few reasons students nucleophile will experience more will experience more steric hindrance from the phenyl group phenyl cation is highly unstable and electronegative difference between carbon halogen bond that is very low because it is a sp2 hybridized carbon which is more electronegative and halogen and also the carbon halogen bond exhibits partial double bond character because of all these reasons the nucleophilic substitution on the aromatic ring will happen only under very high temperatures and very high pressures as percentage of s character increases bond length decreases bond strength increases and polarity is also going to be decreased under certain conditions an aryl halide can undergo nucleophilic substitution so if you take aryl halide nucleophilic substitution in aryl halides sn1 and sn2 does not take stress then what happens actually it is not sn1 and it is not sn2 then what type of reaction is that nucleophilic substitution by nucleophilic substitution nucleophilic aromatic substitution by addition elimination aromatic substitution by addition elimination retype okay we'll discuss this in the next class the nucleophilic substitution by addition elimination is going to happen in the respective halo arrange we'll discuss that and different other reactions we'll discuss after that we'll proceed with the alcohols phenols and ethers thank you all everyone bye Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.